Hi everyone, it's Emmanuel here. I'm pretty sure that there is a question in the churches today, and among many group of believers, they're asking this question, but nobody's really voicing it out. And um, the reason I, I know this question exists is because I've talked to various different people, and they're asking the same question. And what is that single question? And that's simply this, why are no churches, like very, very little churches, very little group of believers talking about the end times, preaching about the end times? Okay, now, recently what happened is that while I was at the bank, okay, I was just trying to take care of some business and I've been in this branch for a long time and I, and I, and, and I know that one of the um, uh, assistant brand manager there, um, she is a Christian and, and, and there's also the branch manager there. I found out earlier that he was also a Christian. So sometimes I talk to them and things like that. I, I kind of see hints of them about like the end times and things like that, you know, how like what's happening in the economy, politics, and, you know, like, basically a signs of the times. And when I started talking to them lately, okay, God opened a door for me to basically come and have dinner with them uh, this coming week and because they wanted to talk more about the end times. So like, you know, you got to come to a branch more often because we stood at the branch there. There are people there and, you know, like, people are helping out other people. And, but we're just talking about the things of end times, the coming of Jesus. And they're very intrigued. And one of the, uh, one of the uh, branch managers there, she's saying how, <clears throat> you know, like, how come there's no one talk? like, how can the pastors and the people in the church, they not talking about the end times? You know, they're like, how could it be? Like, she's saying, I can see, like, me, it's just like, my, me and my husband, um, we're thinking that it can be any time now, like, like definitely very close. And, and yet, this is not something talked about in the church. It should be talked about every Sunday. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, I think it should be talked about, you know, but it's, it's not. Why? Okay, now, the question I want to pose to you is simply that one. And, and, and the answer to that question is, number one, I think that simply people just don't realize that we're in the end times. Okay, number two is people don't know how to talk about this stuff because some of the stuff is pretty complicated and intricate. And number three is, is simply because we are so consumed with our own agendas, our own things of life, our own routines, even spiritual routines, that we got into, that we don't have the ear to hear what God is trying to tell us. Now, this is not a thing trying to, I'm not trying to, this is not a thing that's supposed to bash people or what else, that's not. This is an encouragement to you and I. Why don't you and I take on the role to talk to, you know, our, our friends, talk to our people that we hang out with in, in our church. Tell them about the end times. Show them about the end times that you, sh you know. You know, talk about the coming economic collapse. Tell them about Fukushima gonna, you know, all these tons of radioactive uh, material could leak to the global chaos soon. Go tell them about the Euro's gonna crash first and the US dollar is gonna crash following afterward. And then after this economic collapse, there's gonna be US, you know, and there's also gonna be US martial law, FEMA camps everywhere, you know, all these concentration camps. Tell them about that. Tell them about the food shortages, okay? Telling about the, the, the coming California earthquake, the coming, you know, huge uh, tsunami coming to the East Coast with hundreds of uh, 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 feet tall. Coming tsunami to the West Coast. Go tell them about all this stuff. Coming, you know, this, uh, all the signs of the sun and the moon. Tell them all this stuff. Telling the coming fallen angels that are coming to, to, to deceive the whole world. Tell them about all the things that you know, the, the, the Illuminati, the Bilderberg, you know, all the plans of the, the, the Luciferians, the Illuminati, and all these people. Tell them, but expose them. Expose the things of darkness and bring them to the light so that people can come to know the things of end times, come to repent and trust in Jesus and live a holy life. Because only those who do that will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And surely I'm telling you, surely I'm telling you that the time is coming. The time... I, I know I'm saying like the time has come. I, I, I'm thinking like the time has already come where the judgments of God are going to be poured out on the earth. And that's not going to be a pretty sight. When a great tribulation takes place, one third of the population dies. One third of the, the trees are burned. One third of the sea turns blood. One third of the, the, the day does not give its light. And many horrible things that happens the 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 the, the demonic serpents and, and and devils that are released from the from the bottomless pit for five months torture people that they want to die and they can't die it's not going to be good this is the time guys for you and i to go out and preach the gospel first thing square one 
as I was talking about in another video, is not to try to go do things for God. The first thing is for you and I to get on our knees before God daily and seek God. God, help me walk in a narrow path that leads to life. Is there anything in my life that I'm disobeying you? Is there any nudge that you've been giving me, Holy Spirit, for, for a long time, yet I disobeyed that, yet I took that away in the name of doing ministry? You don't want to do that. You don't want to suppress your conscience you, because the, the book of 1 John says, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God and He'll hear our prayers because we keep His commandments. You see, you can, we can do all this great work. We can do all these great signs and wonders, healings, miracles, and all this stuff. At the end of the day, all this stuff can mean nothing. We can go to hell for that. You know why? Because Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 23, that's what it says. We can do all the wonderful church groups, Bible studies, and worship, and all this stuff, and still end up going to hell if we don't live a repentant life, if we don't pursue holiness, you know, if we don't let go of our unforgiveness, if we don't let go of our bitterness, if we don't let go of our sexual morality, or pornography, you know, fornication, our greed, our idolatry, the greed for money, and all this stuff, we don't get rid of that stuff, doesn't matter how much stuff we do, we're not going to enter heaven. As simple as that. And you can give me all the theologies, all the things that you have in your mind, but just like that minister, John Molendi, that Uganda pastor who is well, like many well known, preaching the gospel. Many churches, pastors know him, give him honor. He's famous. He preached the gospel. He heals the sick. He casts out demons. Many people know him for what he does. But he had a supernatural encounter with God. Okay? And God revealed to him his lifestyle. He was living in his mind, in a sexually immoral lifestyle. He always looked at a woman, and, 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 and in, their, in his mind, he mentally stripped him down. And he, he sinned sexual morality in his mind. Okay, and God says, yeah, many people acknowledge you like this. You're preaching the, the, my word and you're doing all these miracles. But God told them, do not rely on the miracles to determine your standing with me. I do miracles because of my name's sake. I do miracles because I will not allow my name without witness. I do my witness because of my goodness. And, he's, but he, and, he, and God, here's the punchline that God said to him. He says, but if I come today for my bride, I will not come and take you. And he was like, what? And he says, at that moment, this was a supernatural encounter. God's dealing with him for hours, okay? We're talking about literally God showed him. He had a huge prayer meeting with his, God has been telling him. He's weeping and forgotten. And God showed his face to him. He's talking to him, showing him his sins, replaying those moments in his life that he has been sitting against God. He says, at that moment, he says, at the moment, he cannot receive. He says, at that moment, all his theologies cannot receive it. They cannot take that. But Jesus, to him, Jesus said to him, if he come that moment, he wouldn't have taken him. And he says, all these years, I gave up my house. I gave up my, my job. You know, I sacrificed all these hours and I did all these things for you and you won't come and take me home with you when I did all these great things for you? And he says, at that time, his theologies can take it. Yet Jesus still told, told him he won't take him if he continue without repenting. How many of us will find ourselves in the same position as John Melendi? And if you want to hear his full hour testimony, go on my YouTube channel. That, that video is called, Learn Why Jesus Banned Heaven from Famous Uganda Pastor. Or go on the internet, go on YouTube, search John Melendi. John, last name, L-U-M-U-L-I-N-D-E. Search his testimony. You'll hear his whole testimony. How many of us will find ourselves standing on the, on the judgment seat of Christ thinking we're, we're, we're perfect, thinking that we're the righteousness of God in Christ, thinking that we've done all these miracles, all these healings, all these prophesying, all these casting out demons, all these street preaching, all these handing out the gospel tracts, and all this stuff. How many of us will stand before Jesus one day thinking that we're okay when in fact we haven't dealt with the, the inner sins in our lives, we haven't dealt with the inner hurts, the inner bitterness and unforgiveness, the jealousies and all these different things, idolatry, greed, all, how many of us will stand before Jesus one day. And, 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 and basically, find out that we have been workers of iniquity, that we have been practicing a lifestyle of sin and we don't, we, didn't, we don't even know it because we don't want to hear it. Because we have ministers telling us that once you're quote unquote born again, you don't repent and you don't ask God to, to you don't confess your sin, you don't repent anymore because you repent once, you know, and you're fine. Look at Acts chapter 8. The Simon the sorcerer, okay, he repented, he got baptized, believed in Jesus. Then when he saw Simon Peter laid hands and people received the Holy Spirit, he says, give me, I give you money, I give you and give me this power that I can lay hands on people and they receive the Holy Spirit too. 
And Simon Peter says, you, you know, he says, your money perish with you because you think you can buy the gift of God. He says, therefore, repent and perhaps God will relent from, you know, this calamity is happening to you. He was saved. Why do you need to repent? And what we have people tell us today, you don't need to repent. And if they say you got to repent, they change the definition of repentance, which is just a change of your mind about who Jesus is. Where, where, where exactly is that? Excuse me? Where, just, just show me. Where, where is that in the scripture? Change about your mind about where, who Jesus is. Where, where is that? Whereas I look at the Bible and it says, For godly sorrow produces repentance leading unto salvation. Whereas I read Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter, uh, sorry, Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 14, it says, They did not repent of their deeds. They did not repent of their sexual immorality. They did not repent of worshiping demons, their deeds. Yet today people don't want to talk about repenting from their sins. They don't want to talk, talk about, oh, God is just, you know, once and for all, God forgive you, past, present, future. Oh, Jesus is so good, Jesus is so good, Jesus is so good, Jesus is loving, Jesus is loving. They don't want to hear about repentance. They don't want to hear about living holy. First Thessalonians chapter 4, it's God's will for his sanctification. He who rejects this does not reject men, but rejects God. Those who reject holiness, those who reject practical holiness, are not rejecting man, they're rejecting God. You can say you're for holiness. You can say you're for holiness and say, Oh, I believe in holiness. Christ my holiness. Okay? But then you go and, live and practice lifestyle sin, go and cause division among the brethren, go and, and, and sin in adultery, and go and sin in pornography and lust, fornication, lust, unforgiveness, bitterness, and all these things. You go and practice that lifestyle, just like John Melendi. I have done that for a long part of my life. And God has woke me up in 2009. And I continue to pursue holiness. I continue to pursue Him. I'm not saying I'm perfect, guys. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm just saying, guys, right in this hour where the spirit of Antichrist is so strong, those who think that they're doing the will of God are absolutely the enemies of the cross of Christ. And I'm telling you, we have to be ready because Jesus is coming any moment now. And when we seek God, when we, when we get on our knees, seek God, repent, when we do that, God changes us, transforms us, He gives us peace. And when we have that, it's time for us to go and preach the gospel. It's time for us to minister the word of life to other people, to warn them about end times. This is what we need to do. Because I'm telling you, many people are wondering the same question today. How come no one is talking about the end times? I want to know about the end times signs. To tell me more. That's why I'm going out uh, to have dinner with this branch uh, manager. He, he, he's like uh, 20, uh, I think he's maybe uh, 30. Okay, Young man like me. Okay, another, like, um, this is maybe a, a more older than us, so she, the, another assistant manager, she is uh, with her family. She says she's going to come with her husband. I don't know whether she's going to come with her children or not, but they want to hear. These people want to hear about the end times. So I just suggest to you, when we get on our knees, we see God, we repent, we're pursuing holiness, now we're going to do the second step and go and warn people. We continue to live a repentant heart, we continue to live a repentant life, and then pursue holiness, and then we just go everywhere, sow seeds, you know? Yeah, you know, just, I mean, like, you don't have to go and lecture people. You don't have to go and get into the face. Just say, yeah, you know, like, we've got, really got to be ready, you know? Jesus is coming any moment now. The economy can come down any time, you know? That's why I'm not trusting the trustable riches. You know, I'm not going to try and store all those zeros in my bank, <laughs> right? Um, I'm going to try to do what God calls me to do, you know? And He's going to provide for me when I seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And uh, I'm going to go and try to do what He called me to do. I'm going to try to obey Him. You know, yeah, the, I mean, and you start talking about the signs. People start being intrigued. And then that's how you minister to them and you pray for them. So let me encourage you. May you and I fill that gap through the power of the Holy Spirit. We come in and, and, and the Holy Spirit works through us, right? Okay, when we, when we, when we uh, sanctify ourselves, we purify ourselves, that we can be that holy vessel that what Paul talked about, that we can be used by God. Right? So we want to sanctify ourselves, purify ourselves, and then we go out and warn people about the end times because people want to know about these things. And they're asking a question, but not, quite frankly, not a lot of people are telling them. Not, not a lot of churches are talking about this. And that's why Cho Thomas gave one of the recent words from the Lord. Okay? She wrote the word, she wrote the book, Heaven is So Real. And Cho Thomas, the recent word that God gave her is, Less than 10% of Christians are going to hear the trumpet call when the rapture happens. And less than 1% of pastors are going to hear the trumpet call. Can you imagine? That's why it brings you and I to our knees. 
We want to make sure that we are that very few who enters into eternal life. Because many, I mean, it is, it's a sad thing when I think about this. We're talking about the majority of people who claims to know Jesus are not going to make it. So pray for your families. Pray for your church. Pray for those who know Jesus. Because unless we have Jesus in the center of our heart, unless we're practicing righteousness and holiness, unless we're living out this faith in truth, not getting into the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father God is not in him. For friendship with the world is enmity with God. And we can go on scriptures after scripture. The disciples asked Jesus, are the few who are saved? And Jesus told them exactly so. He says, strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many will seek to enter it and will not be able to. So may you and I go and do the work of the evangelists, warn as many people as possible that you and I live a holy life until Jesus comes back because that's, that's our only hope. There's nothing I want. Really, there's nothing I want in this life other than to say, God, here I am. Send me. Here I am. Just, just, just use my life. I don't live for this life anymore. Use me, Lord God, for your glory. I don't, I, don't, I don't care about the things I don't want. You know, like I don't need to go to the sales, the discount, whatever. I don't want none of that stuff. I just want to enter through the narrow gate. I want to honor you. I want to worship you, Jesus. I want to give you all the praise and all the glory. And I want to bring as many people as possible with me to heaven through you, your power, Holy Spirit. That's all I want. And so may your, your prayer and I be, be the same song that I revise it a little bit. Okay? That song goes, Is it I, Lord? Okay? It's like quoting the Bible. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Right? Is it I, Lord? Now I sing it, It is I, Lord. So may our prayer, may our prayer to, to be, be, be God, to God, is, they send me, God. You know, just, 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 just sing it to God. Sing, send me. I want to go. I repent. I come before you. You know, I'll keep your people in my heart. It is I, Lord. You have sent me. I will keep your people in my heart. It is I, Lord. You have sent me. I will keep your people in my heart. I pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that this person that's watching this video, and my, my, include myself, that we will always keep your people in the heart, that we will pray, we'll intercede, and we'll witness, because we know that you're soon coming. Send us, Lord, here we are. Help us die to our old life. Help us die to the desires of this life. Help us die to sin, die to unrighteousness. But give us an ever-increasing desire for the things of God and for righteousness and for the things of eternity. Stamp eternity on our eyeballs and let the things of this life and this world grow strangely dim as we focus on you, Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we worship you, Lord God. We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Worthy, worthy, worthy is a lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. We thank you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.